All right. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Sydney Edwards. I'm one of our public information officers here at APD. And on behalf of the department, I thank you all for joining us here today. Now, we plan on using this time today to talk about crime trends in our city. First, we'll hear from Police Chief Art Acevedo, and then we'll hear from Council Member Francoise Bergen from Ward 6. She represents Southeast Aurora. At the end, we will take time for questions then. Chief. Thank you, Sydney. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, this morning, we're going to do, like uh, Sydney just said, I'm going to give you an update on the homicide that occurred at 6100 South Main Street. Then we'll talk a little bit about violent crime trends in our city to update the community. Uh, and then we'll talk about some proactive initiatives that we've been uh, taking on here to, to do what we need to do to combat crime. Uh, and then I'm going to Councilmember Bergen saw we're having a press conference and wanted to uh, say a few words uh, on behalf of uh, herself and her constituents. So first of all, the homicide that occurred on September 30th at, at 8.28 p.m at 6100 South Main Street. The update is as follows. Number one, the victim has been identified as Rafael Vallon, a date of birth of 1-6 of uh, 2008. He's a 15-year-old youth. Uh, I can say that our, again, our condolences go out to this uh, young man and his family and his friends, uh, schoolmates, and everyone that knew him and loved him. Our victim services unit has been working very closely to support the family, which during what would obviously is a very difficult time uh, for the family. The Aurora Police Department Major Crimes Unit, Homicide Unit, immediately began this investigation. And at this time, we've determined that there are five suspects and multiple shooters involved based on the evidence collected on the scene on September 30th. The suspects, we believe, are all juveniles or young adults. And we have determined that this was actually a prearranged a meeting between the victim and the suspects. Uh, it's important to point that out because there have been a lot of media reports that this was just a group of kids enjoying uh, homecoming festivities and although homecoming was going on that weekend, this, uh, this event, this tragedy was not a homecoming event. It was actually a pre-planned meeting between these individuals uh, for, to conduct some business that I would just say that uh, we're not going to say specifically what the business was other than juveniles should not be involved in what was going on that night. And uh, sadly, when you engage in uh, conduct that is uh, arguably can be um, risky uh, conduct, some of these are the type of things that happened. But I want to emphasize again that despite the reports of the belief that this was involving homecoming activities, uh, that is simply not the case. In, uh, in this incident. We are confident that uh, we will uh, actually bring justice to this family. At this time, we have one individual that has, uh, we've obtained a first, a, a first degree murder uh, warrant that has been issued for one individual uh, by the 18th Judicial District. And we fully anticipate arresting this individual in the upcoming days. And we are also working actively in securing the arrest of this suspect. Again, uh, to the family of the suspect that I'm sure will find this, um, you need to be the solution, not part of the problem. Uh, this individual is wanted for murder, and anyone that may be uh, aiding and abetting the individual is committing a criminal offense. And so the sooner that we get the individual into custody uh, in a safe manner, the better off it's going to be for everyone involved, including the individuals that may or may not be aiding and abetting. Uh, it's real clear to us that this individual needs to come in, come into custody. Uh, we don't believe they're in the area right now, uh, but anyone that has information that especially family members needs to come forward and get this individual into custody. And this, this investigation is ongoing. We know we have multiple other suspects involved. Uh, and so we're not going to say any, any, any more on that. Uh, bottom line is we have one arrest warrant issued. We're actively looking for the individual, and we're highly confident we will uh, have that person in custody in the next uh, few days. Having said that, let's talk real quickly about uh, violent crime in our city. Violent crime in our city, in our region, in our state, and this country continues to be way too high. We know that. We have a proliferation of firearms easy access to firearms, short fuses, 
uh, social media and the problem with youth violence in our country. Been 37 years of police, and I, to me, I, you know, it's the worst that I've seen. Uh, young people just, especially young people, just shooting, uh, committing uh, aggravated assaults, attempted murders, and murders over the just the the the, the slightest. Uh, in many cases, the slightest offense, the slightest, you know, you offended me type of thing, and it's not just going on here, but it's going on across the country. Fortunately for us in the city of Aurora, what we have seen over the last few years is that we have been trending upward, uh, but the good news is that that trend, as of the uh, last quarter of last year, we started seeing the trend starting going downward, and we're starting to see uh, double digits this year uh, reduction in violent crime in our city, and that's something we should celebrate. Having said that, uh, any violence, any, any violence, whether it's one or a thousand, doesn't matter to that victim, doesn't matter to family, friends, and colleagues of victims, and we're still having too much violent crime. Uh, our homicides this year, um, as of the last PAC uh, report, is uh, down one, uh, and that is of 918 of this. Uh, September 18th uh, was down one and again we're hopeful that uh, when we end the year we're going to be down uh, homicides at the end of the year. It's important for the community to know and for people that would be doing harm especially uh, committing murders in our city to know that last year this department closed the year with 85 percent an 85 percent clearance rate on our homicides in the city of Aurora. The national average as of uh, 2020, which is the last, the, the, the most uh, up-to-date data we could find, was 54%. We ended the year last year in our homicides, which is the one crime that's permanent, right? You can, we can, thanks to our victim services and all the resources available, we can help people that are victims become survivors by helping them navigate the recovery uh, from, some, from an act of violence or any other crime. But we ended up 85% which is important because if you commit a, a homicide in our city, you're much more likely to be uh, apprehended and charged and held accountable than you are in a lot of other places across the country. Year to date for this year, we're at about 67%, but we fully anticipate that to, to go up. And again, the national average is 54% as of 2020, the last uh, data that we had. Year to date, uh, in terms of since through September, um, 17th, 18th, we were down for all part one crimes, uh, double digits, which is 15% with the exception of uh, this recently we saw a little spike about seven uh, additional sex assaults uh, as compared to last year. Out of the sex assaults that we've had year to date uh, since 918, about 12, my recollection, are anonymous where individuals come into our area hospitals and they want to get a sane uh, examination, but it's anonymous. We don't even know uh, whether those occurred in the city or anywhere else or uh, anywhere even out of state. We just don't know because they're anonymously given. We've actually drilled down uh, significantly to make sure there's no um, threat in terms of uh, any type of uh, sex assault suspect that's going around uh, assaulting multiple victims, and we just don't see anything of that nature. So there's. Uh, Quite honestly, when I see the seven, we know that sexual assaults are one of the most underreported crimes uh, in the country because of a lot of factors. Uh, victims don't think they'll be believed. They don't want to uh, be ostracized, and I can just go on down the line. So I, although we never want to see uh, crimes going up in any category, um, when it comes to sexual assault, it's one of the most, again, uh, underreported uh, out of all the crimes. I. I, it's a double-edged sword for me. I, I want our victims to know that if they come forward, they're going to be taken seriously. We're going to put uh, all of our resources to help victims navigate uh, the, uh, the path, uh, the road to justice, and we stand uh, with them. Now, when uh, Dan Oates got here, um, I think sometime in early 22, um, he did something that was really important. I want to give him credit, and that's to put our department back in the crime fighting mode. We know that with uh, the issues we had in terms of 
uh, the uh, pandemic and everything else that the country is dealing with that a lot of crime fighting across the country slowed down. I'm proud of the fact that Dan reconstituted our DART team, which is doing a phenomenal job of going out and really catching really bad actors, uh, helping our homicide unit actually go out and actually uh, get the evidence we need to solve these heinous crimes, and I think it's having a tremendous impact. Some of our proactive um, issues we have going on, again, our PAR, our DART, our NARCs, are actually working diligently across all areas using data to try to reduce crime, whether it's in the Colfax uh, corridor uh, or anywhere in the city. When we see uh, pockets of crime, we do, we're, we're using our proactive units to go out and actually uh, work to reduce that crime. PAR recently generated a nuisance uh, complaint on a multi-family housing complex which has experienced a significant increase in criminal activity and calls for service in the last year. So we're working very closely with our city partners. Uh, we know that some of the uh, multi-unit <laughs> multi rental locations, sometimes some owners are more responsible than others, more diligent in terms of trying to ensure a safe environment for uh, folks staying there. And as uh, PAR has identified, uh, locations that are really becoming a nuisance. We are using all the tools provided to us by law to hold those landlords accountable and to uh, use every tool available to combat uh, that issue. Uh, I'm very proud of our SROs. Our SROs are really working uh, very closely to try to build relationships and trust with young people. Trust is really important. It's a commodity that we rely on uh, to build better, to, to uh, hopefully uh, achieve greater results in terms of public safety. And I think those relationships, quite honestly, uh, there's a reason on Friday we named them the unit of the year. Uh, they are crime fighters, they're counselors, I think they're role models, uh, and quite honestly, as a result of uh, their efforts to build that trust with young people, we're starting to see young people actually uh, come forward and we're st we've actually averaged uh, one and a half guns per month that we're recovering in schools to get those firearms out of the hands of young people, especially in the school environment, that uh, would um, can potentially be lead to a, a negative outcome in, in the schools. Our, we have started our weekly public safety shoot review, uh, our weekly meeting with our partner agencies at the, st at the federal, state, county, and local level, where we're actually in these meetings looking at our more um, high profile, uh, more volatile shootings and prioritizing our regional approach to going after the, the, the worst of the worst, which I think is having an impact. I want to thank uh, Chief Hildebrand and his team uh, for the work they're doing with our partners at the city uh, to actually really focus on individuals that are doing uh, the, 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 the majority of the harm uh, to our community. That is something that's fairly new in our, uh, in our issue, I mean in our city. We actually created a gun violence suppression team that is investigating non-fatal shootings. We did not have that uh, before. We just did that a, a, few, a few months ago. And these are basically uh, detectives that are doing phenomenal work going to non-fatal shootings and actually starting to clear those cases, actually investigating those cases. Every non-fatal shooting in our city is, uh, in essence, it is a attempted murder. And the way that you want to reduce murders is to solve attempted murders because people that are going around shooting people are people that if they're le left out there to their own devices, eventually they're going to be successful. And I'm very proud of that unit that uh, they may be small, or they may be few, but they're actually making a difference and they're starting to clear uh, the, the non-fatal uh, shoot, uh, shoots, which is um, really important. And as of today, this young unit, and young in terms of the, the fact that it just started a few um, a few months ago, has cleared a uh, 50% clearance rate over non-fatal shooting. So you have a 50-50 chance on your first non-fatal shooting of being caught, which again is above the national average in my hat, goes out to our investigators for the work that they're doing. Uh, and also our federal partners and our regional partners that are working very closely with us with our weekly uh, shoot review as well. Our Aurora SAVE, which is the gun violence intervention strategy that we started, has already uh, as of today, had nine custom notifications 
which is a direct contact at the residence uh, of individuals that are either at risk of being a victim or at risk of actually uh, going to prison for a long time. We just started that about two weeks ago, and I'm really proud that uh, when this goes full bore at the beginning of the year, of the new year, we really believe that we're going to continue to see this reduction, the, 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 the pattern that we're seeing, which is a reduction in violence, uh, continue, and I think it will actually lead to even greater success for our region. I can just tell you one of the stories I heard from the very first notification was a father of a, a young offender that uh, almost brought tears to, well actually did bring tears to the eyes of uh, our Captain uh, Hannafin who actually made the notification where the father of this individual that we were uh, reaching out to um, told his story. He had spent uh, many years in prison, over a decade in prison himself, had some real trust issues with law enforcement. Um, and quite honestly, when he realized in the telling of the story from Captain Hannafin that we actually cared. Or we, we don't want to just go out and just lock people up, throw away the key. We want to prevent people. We want to we get people out of that cycle of violence, either as a suspect or a victim, that it was um, very impactful. And I'm proud that our captain was able to show a little bit of his emotions. It shows how much, how deeply our men and women care about this community. And it, in the upcoming year, I believe that that's going to uh, be uh, very effective. Uh, I want to thank our DEA partners who have been working with us in Operation Overdrive, which is a partnership with them to focus on fentanyl-related uh, fentanyl re crimes. We have actually already had at least one prosecution where we were able to identify a suspect that actually provided a fentanyl to a young individual that ended up dying. And, uh, we were able to get some uh, significant, significant prison time for that individual. And thanks to our partners with, the, with the, the DEA and the U.S. Attorney and also local uh, attorneys here in terms of our prosecutors, uh, you're going to start seeing a little bit more, a lot more aggressive uh, enforcement in terms of going over, going after the people that are poisoning our youth. As a as a father of a 15 year old, that. Um, you know, they're kids, right? They don't understand that fentanyl is everywhere. I keep telling my son, if you're taking and ingesting anything that's not from a pharmacy that you yourself or your parents picked up, you are playing Russian roulette. They are putting fentanyl in just about everything in terms of trying to poison our youth. And the worst case scenario in my mind is getting that call that your son or your daughter or your loved one is dead because uh, they've ingested fentanyl and they've died. So uh, my hats go off to the DEA and we look forward to continuing that, that, uh, that uh, drive. The other uh, thing that I think is really going to be important for our city is our, gr uh, is our crime gun intelligence unit, which will be focusing on just that, uh, uh, crime guns, trying to tie guns in terms of the ballistics to different uh, scenes across the city, across the region across the state and, and quite honest across the country keep in mind that many times uh, the criminal element actually share firearms they hand them off to each other they do all kinds of stuff and by use by establishing a, gr a crime gun intelligence unit that we are now uh, almost up and running it is going to have a tremendous impact on our ability to uh, uh, really solve uh, crime gun um, gun crime and and uh, gun-related crime, and also I believe is going to help us save lives. And so that's something else that we need to celebrate as a community. The last thing that uh, I will say in terms of our strategies in a DART, G, uh, a gar DART, our gang investigations unit, SWAT, NARCs, our narcotics unit are all working very closely together, uh, conducting proactive street crime operations and self-initiated activity to impact violent crime, help solve shootings, and obviously uh, impact all crime, uh, gun crime, by identifying the violent offenders. Uh, so with that, I, I want to uh, tell our community that our department may be uh, short on staff, but we're, but we're not, what we are not short off uh, of on is great people. We've got men and women that are committed to doing everything they can uh, to reduce violent crime in our city, and I believe that as a result of 
the efforts, the very uh, intentional efforts to build trust uh, and to actually go out and talk to young people, build that trust with the SROs. Uh, uh, thank God that the legislature passed a law and the governor signed it that our city supported very aggressively where the victims, witnesses, victims, witnesses, and suspects, obviously there are juveniles that we can maintain uh, their anonymity because as you can imagine that in a world of social media and, and, and cyber bullying and everything else, uh, young people now know that they can come forward without their names as a victim and as a witness without their names being splashed all over uh, the place. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Councilmember Bergen, who wanted to come back with the Councilmember, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Chief, um, for the update, and also just to um, to convey the initiatives that the police department is taking to uh, to solve violent crime, all crime. Um, and the reason I wanted to just address um, the public is because I did obviously hear from uh, many of my constituents um, in Southeast Aurora that were concerned about the uh, shooting incident in the Southlands um, shopping center that happened, and. Um, I, I want them to know that we do hear them, that, um, you know, that although this was not a random shooting um, and, and they should not fear obviously going, um, going out and about with their business, but that we do hear them and we understand their fear and, and their concerns and we want to make sure that they know that our police are doing everything possible to address um, any kind of crime that happens in our city, uh, no matter where it is and no matter who it affects. And I, I know. Um, that our police are working um, extremely hard and working overtime, in fact. So um, I just want to say that, that our council also supports our police in all their initiatives to make sure that we do um, make public safety a priority. Um, if you do commit crime in Aurora, we do want the message to go out that you will get caught and you will be held accountable. Um, it is not to be tolerated. Enough is enough. And... Um, I do want to also say that my sympathies do go out to the family that lost their son. It is, tr you know, tragic for any anybody to to lose a family member to violent crime, and um, I, I'm it's heartbreaking. And so I do want to extend my sympathies. Um, I also wanted to state that I do have a town hall on November 15th. We will focus on public safety. Um, again, any of my constituents. Um, I, I hope you'll be there because um, we want to be able to answer your questions um, and your concerns. And lastly, um, we will be having a meeting with the Southlands um, management team uh, this Wednesday afternoon. Um, they reached out to us and we also want to make sure that we're doing everything possible to support them and, um, and make sure that um, our communities are safe. And lastly, please talk to your kids. You know, I know uh, good people out there that don't think things like this will happen and just urge you to please have good have conversations with your children and uh, and and be safe. Thank you very much. Thank you chief and thank you to the department. Thank you council member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you council member for for being a great partner and for being here with us. Uh, one last thing I want to address before we open up the question and that's uh, what's happened this weekend. We know that there's a conflict a very violent conflict in the Middle East right now and to our community whether no matter what side of these issues you're on uh, know that we are very closely monitoring our area of responsibility here in Aurora and across this region and state uh, law enforcement across the country is working very closely with our federal partners uh, looking for any threats uh, to uh, a, any part of our community uh, but at the end of the day uh, if anyone wants to exercise their First Amendment rights to protest uh, or, or express their opinions, obviously this is a nation where that is allowed, but we will not tolerate violence. We will be monitoring uh, our region for any uh, threats, uh, and uh, any threat will be taken um, very seriously and will be dealt with uh, aggressively and within the confines of the law. It's important for us all as Coloradans, as Americans, and as residents of our community, uh, state, and country to uh, be vigilant and to uh, be mindful uh, and to understand that uh, if there's a threat out there, if you hear anything, if you see something, 
uh, say something and report it to your local law enforcement agency or your local FBI uh, office. Again, we haven't, uh, for our area of responsibility, we have not identified any specific threats, but we know there are going to be vigils, uh, there are going to be prayer vigils, and you can uh, uh, be assured that we will be uh, present, we may be visible, or we may not be visible, we may be in plain clothes, but we will be monitoring uh, those type of activities. And lastly, I've directed my team, our team, to conduct uh, what we call directed patrols in, uh, uh, to religious institutions uh, and other uh, locations that we believe may be, uh, you know, a potential, a potential area for a problem. And so uh, for the community, just know that we are monitoring the situation. My, my heart goes out to uh, obviously all the victims uh, of this violence that's going on in, in the Middle East right now. And so with that, we will open up to any questions from anybody. Can you tell us why you don't want to talk about the risky activities that you were playing at the United Because, you know, the, the only individuals that know exactly what the activity was are the individuals involved. And so we don't want to talk about the actual activity until we uh, identify and uh, arrest uh, the additional individuals that we're still looking uh, for. So that's, those are details of the investigation, right? That we, until we have people charged, uh, because obviously once you have people charged, that means you have, the details will probably be in your charging document and then it'll become more public. But we have to protect the, the investigation. Could you say there were guns, there's drugs, there's some thieves? Well, there are guns, there's a dead person, multiple shooters. So obviously there was guns. We're not gonna talk about the themes or what we were looking about. No statewide homicide spike in 2020 is a record high. And Aurora's crime rate surpassed Denver for the first time in 20 years that year. So when you say violent crime is down 15%, are you seeing it down to pre-pandemic levels of 10 or 12, or is it just coming down from that high? We're not uh, pre-pandemic levels yet, but we're headed in the right direction. And, and the most important piece is that we have consistently, now for four quarters, are heading in the right direction. So we just need to sustain that. And I think a big part of sustaining that is for the community to be vigilant, for, to come forward, to cooperate and give us information when they see things uh, going on. And quite honestly, uh, it, it, as we build that trust, and you know, that we are working so diligently to rebuild, to strengthen, we believe that we're gonna see more and more cooperation from our community. Uh, and, and as we come together as a community, we're going to sustain it. I'm very hopeful that, uh, you know, that's not by happenstance. We've actually reconstituted our crime fighting units. We've changed our uh, strategies. We've added uh, a, a gun violence uh, reduction team. You, you name it. It's, it start, it's working. Now it's a matter of sustaining it. So, but yeah, we're heading in the right direction. But even if we were pre-pandemic, let's face it, we're supposed to be this country across this country where we're so, you know, a, a world-class country, we still have way too much violence in, in, this, in this country, pre and, and, and after. Yes, sir? Can you give us the details of how they contacted this? You talked about uh, contacting somebody who was a father of a potential offender. Like, where does that information come from? How do you make that approach? We work with our prosecutors. We work with all of our partners, uh, both uh, government partners and our uh, non-governmental partners to uh, uh, come together to identify who we think would be a good candidate. Um, when we get next year, when we actually roll out the full, I don't know whose mic this is, I apologize. It's okay. Oh, I, <laughs> looks like I picked the right one then. <laughs> huh? Hey, who says cops don't have a sense of humor, right? Oh shoot, there it goes again. Uh, so anyway, so when we actually roll out full steam um, at, at Q1, right after the new year, uh, we'll probably do a specific uh, roll out where you, the community and the media, who are our most important partners to get the information out to the community, uh, to really walk everyone through through the process. To be good. Para empezar, eh, es importante que la comunidad sepa que eh, cuando ocurrió ese homicidio, 
que era, eh, déjenme ver la fecha aquí un momentico, para que le pueda dar la fecha bien, porque no quiero decirle eh, mal, malas cosas. Pero la fecha fue el día, eh, el día 30 de septiembre con los 8 y 28. A la prensa reportaron que estos muchachos, había muchachos jamás que estaban en el, thank you sir, I feel like a politician who I won't say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had too much coffee this morning. <laughs> eh, sabemos que eh, había reportes de la prensa que los muchachos más que estaban ahí para ir al homecoming del fútbol y eso. Y la verdad es que esta, esta, esta era un plan, estaban planeando estar a juntarse. A juntarse. Eh, sabemos que tenemos uh, como cinco personas que dispararon tiros. Tenemos un sospechoso juvenil que ya tenemos orden de arresto por homicidio y estamos bien seguros que lo vamos a encontrar y llevarlo preso en estos días. En fin del día, es importante que los padres sepan a dónde están sus hijos, qué están haciendo y están al tanto de eso. Uh, pero eso no fue nada más que, que fue un asalto y más nada. Eso es, no vamos a ir específicamente qué ocurrió porque la investigación continúa. Uh, también queremos que sepa la comunidad que este, esta, el, 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 el crimen violento sigue bajando ya, hemos, ya más de o, casi un año con el crimen bajando, 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 pero todavía hay mucho crimen. No podemos dejarnos, no podemos tener temor. Si una persona es un testigo o es víctima, tiene que adelante a venir a, a trabajar con nosotros para llevar al sospechoso a la justicia. Yo sé que por el tema de la inmigración tenemos mucho temor, muchas personas que no están aquí documentadas, pero acuérdense que en este departamento estamos aquí para buscar el criminal, el que está causando daño a nuestra comunidad, especialmente el que está cometiendo crímenes eh, penal uh, de aquí estatal y federal, no necesariamente eh, eh, si están aquí indocumentados o no. No tengan temor que aquí estamos para buscar la justicia, no estamos aquí para ser agentes de la ICE. Para mí es muy importante. En la comunidad no, no somos nada. Chief, you mentioned that there would be directed patrols around you know, religious places and perhaps any services that were taking place. Have, has anyone contacted no one has contacted me. I'm not aware of anyone in the department is uh, uh, the department receiving any any uh, um, any requests for uh, uh, increased pr uh, visibility or presence patrols. But that's just the prudent thing to do, right? It's just uh, you know when you look at the conflict, especially in the Middle East, it's it goes back generations and hundreds of years, and we just have to be 100 years, so we have to just be vigilant. Uh, and, and, and be proactive, right? That's our job. Our job is not is not to be reactive, but proactive, and hopefully through some uh, increased visibility, we'll be able to just make sure that people feel safe. And could you expand, please? You mentioned a program that was geared towards focusing on apartment complexes where there were issues. Can, yeah. Could you expand on that a little bit more? You well, you know, yeah, I have. I don't. I I could just tell you that there are locations where uh, sometimes landlords. Are apps, quite honestly, they don't live in our city, they don't live in our region, they don't live in our state, and um, all they do is buy a piece of property, and then they don't manage it well. And they don't do anything to create a safe environment for uh, the residents and a safe environment for the neighborhood, and that's called a nuisance. And so we have nuisance abatement uh, laws and uh, ordinances in our city, and we're working closely with our partners at the city to as we identify these and I think we just uh, did one I don't have it off the top of my head and I don't want to identify it because I'm not sure where we're in the process but I can tell you I went to an apartment complex a few weeks ago where there was a big shootout and I um, after talking to the officers we had like 75 calls for service in this one apartment uh, complex in a month and that's called a clue that they're not managing that uh, location the way they should uh, and so to the landlords where you live here or somewhere else, if you're a property owner and uh, your prop you're not taking care of your property, uh, not being good partners, I can tell you we're going to work very closely thanks to the ordinances that we have to, to uh, abate those locations. Back on the South Lake issue, was this a pamphlet? Or, or is there any you are, I, I'm going to give you an A for real <laughs> effort <laughs> because you're good. What, where are you with again? Who are you with? Nine news. We cannot talk anymore about the investigation. Just that we do have one warrant for murder, uh, first degree murder, 
we have that suspect identified. The judicial, the 18th Judicial District discussed the uh, send off on the warrant and the judge did and we're gonna catch that individual and, uh, and, that, and through their family. Uh, you could uh, either help us or uh, by helping us, you're gonna help yourself. Uh, this is a wanted person. People know it's a wanted person and if someone, whoever's with them, if we determine that you know knew they were wanted and you're uh, giving them shelter or aiding and abetting, you're gonna be held accountable criminally. Uh, that's all there is, but good, good you're good, I will give you that, you're very good. Well, you, know, uh, you have a job to do, I get it. <laughs> will you release a photo of that suspect or the name anytime soon? We will if, uh, when and if it's appropriate at the appropriate time. Anything else? All right, y'all, thank I do have, on the apartment complex, have you started any paperwork? Where do you assistance? live again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're starting to worry a little bit too on, much, on I wonder the, where he lives. <laughs> I want to make sure it's not mine. Uh, I'm using this debate. Have you started the paperwork on that yet? Like, has a yeah, we, we're starting to look at that uh, strategy. It's something I can tell you that if it, we, we want to be judicious, right? Um, but uh, not every property or property owner is built equally. And when people pay rent, they, they want a safe place to live. And the neighborhood wants to make sure that uh, any complex, any, any location that's uh, especially rentals, um, that that they don't become a nuisance not to mention a public safety issue for the community so again thank you all very much appreciate you thanks for what you talk to the council member just a follow-up question for the council member i don't know you're gonna have to ask could, her could, could, yeah, we ask you a follow-up sure. question please uh you mentioned that you would be talking and meeting with the uh, business owners in the south and so on what have they been telling you are they afraid that less people are coming to shop or what are they telling you about that? no they're not they're not uh stating that they they just want to be again proactive and making sure that they are doing everything they can to assure the, the, the community that it is a safe place to shop and then um, just a partnership with our police department um, as well. So um, really just being proactive. Is there anything more that you would like to see be done there? Is there something else needed that you can say? Yeah. It's. A, I mean, I live. I live right by the the shopping center, and it's a safe place. I sh I shop there all the time, maybe too often. Um, but uh, you know, this was uh, basically an isolated incident that um, we we just want to assure the public that it is safe, um, and and just again wanting to make sure that we partner with the management uh, company uh, to keep it safe. Well, let, me, let me add one thing to that too. And, ju and just so you know, we do have a full-time officer assigned to that mall. Just like we have full-time officers assigned to the mall up here. Uh, I can just tell you, I, I, I shop at both malls and they're very safe. And when we look at the crime data for that region, oh, I'm sorry, shopping center. Out, uh, yeah, the outdoor shopping center. Oh, no. uh, the mall, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm an old guy, I can't, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, the crime is down over there. It's a very safe uh, location to actually shop and recreate in. So again, thank you all very much. Thanks for what you do, and, um, and my, again, our prayers and thoughts are with everyone involved with the Israeli uh, conflict. Thank you.